<laughs> so, so Stellar is a financial protocol that essentially increases the interoperability between diverse financial systems and diverse currencies. So it allows any kind of currency or any kind of value, dollars, euros, Bitcoin, pesos, to move freely within the network. Uh, it is intended to be a backend for real time and faster payments. And it also is a backend for lower foreign exchange type of transactions, cross-border transactions. Um, it is supported by a not-for-profit, the Stellar Development Foundation, uh, which Jed and I are part of. It's structured that way so it can behave more like the internet and more like email. SMTP and the internet are also different kinds of core infrastructure that are not owned by one entity. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with how these protocols are set, there's typically standard setting bodies like the uh, IETF that comes together, has multiple stakeholders from industry and the public to decide how these uh, protocols should work. So in any financial institution or, or anyone can, can, use this, can use this system, we need this like addressing scheme. So we have this idea called payment addresses, which translate, uh, you know, I'm sure you're all familiar with like Bitcoin addresses and Ethereum addresses and all these things. We have a similar underlying, like basically it's just a public key, but everyday users don't want to use that. So you need some way to map some, something human readable, and again, it looks a lot like email addresses to these public keys. And that's what this federated addresses thing is, and uh, we'll show you that in the, in the demo a little bit later. You just, enter the, you just enter the user's federation address or payment address, the amount you want to send, and it resolves it to the underlying public key. What we're trying to do is make an open protocol for payments and very much like email, uh, because it is this open system, we hope it can, it can grow uh, extremely quickly. Like as people adopt it, it gets, it gets more and more valuable. Um, and it should allow uh, sort of an internet analog for, uh, of innovation uh, in, in, the, in the economic realm. So um, we're pretty excited about that. What I'm most excited about is the following, which is the ability to do cross-asset transfer. So you can imagine, for example, uh, an employee of Facebook who holds a lot of Facebook stock and he wants to buy something, and this by the way is, is a liquid asset already, um, but he wants to buy uh, a copy. Well, imagine how complicated that process would be. You have to go and sell your shares through a brokerage and it would take forever and you'd probably leave that copy shop before you even uh, have time to get the copy. Well, with something like this, you could, you could take advantage of all the liquidity for all the assets inside of a decentralized exchange. So for example, you could use your Facebook stock to buy that, um, that cup of coffee by hopping from Facebook to USD or Bitcoin to something like uh, a week future um, to that cup of coffee or a share of the Empire State Building. I think that's pretty powerful and it's something that really does not exist today at all. And it could unlock a, a world of possibilities. Um, and we're really excited to make that happen. And so, you know, the, the thoughts that I'd like to leave you with here are that there's a lot of inefficiency in private markets. And distributed ledger technology is a very good solution to these inefficiencies. And in particular, Stellar is the right platform to do it on. But we can't do it ourselves. Stellar is a underlying infrastructure that makes this possible. But we need partners that actually onboard these assets and do all the necessary KYC and uh, uh, investor accreditation and all of the things that are necessary to make sure that this is all compliant with today's securities regulations. Using Stellar makes it possible to create, send, and trade digital assets backed by nearly any form of value and to do so in a compliant matter, manner. The network is with the traditional financial system to leverage the benefits of blockchain technology to enhance, but not supplant existing infrastructure. The Stellar Network has been operating for over five years. And today, the network processes over 2.5 million daily transactions with over 4.5 million accounts. And uh, today we're gonna to be discussing stable coins, central bank digital currencies, and focusing on issues of interoperability, in, including in cross-border payments. Through the use of this open decentralized network, which is called the Stellar Network. Uh, and we believe that by connecting the network to the existing banking infrastructure, we can actually touch those that are unbanked and underbanked all over the world. Uh, question of central bank digital currencies. 
And as you know, there's an increasing number of central banks around the world considering uh, the option of introducing a central bank digital currency, a digital currency that they would issue directly uh, to the public for retail use. And the uh, central banks are thinking about doing this for a variety of reasons. Some for to economize on cash management costs, uh, some for financial inclusion purposes, some for resilience because they see the payment system being increasingly in the hands of large private companies, and some simply to compete against the big tech firms that are introducing new means of payment um, and in order to remain relevant. So it's actually very interesting for us at the IMF who go around and speak to countries around the world to see the diversity of uh, reasons that central bank give to be interested in central bank digital currency. And so this may become a reality relatively soon. From our perspective at the Stellar Development Foundation, like our network is set up perfectly for CBDCs to be issued on Stellar. And we actually, I mean, there's so many different ways to be able to get this out to the to the public, but we would love to see this. This is a way that governments can uh, get in contact with those users out there that currently don't have a bank just down the street to be able to get to them, but could use a mobile device to be able to uh, connect up with the banking infrastructure, for example. So from our standpoint, CBDCs actually enhance uh, not just our network, but just the, the financial system as it exists today. And there's not a whole lot of work to be done here because there's already regulation. You you know how to regulate currency. You know how to regulate fiat. What you've already laid is just another thing that we can go on top of. So I think that this is a great opportunity for the globe to be able to be more connected. What is going on? Happy, what is today, Tuesday? I've got the man himself. Justin Rice, head of ecosystem, Stella Development Foundation, with the cool beanie hat on that I'm really feeling right now. Looks real comfortable and warm. How you doing today, man? Yeah. I'm I'm thrilled to be here. I'm having a good day. I'm wearing a beanie because my house is old and very drafty. So it's like it's practical and stylish. It is um, no, it, no, you're doing but... it because it's stylish, man. You know, let's stop fronting. You're stylish. <laughs> I'm really happy though, I also man. Had the, I have a deep in COVID lack of haircut, and the the, the, <laughs> the hat helps wrangle a massive unruly hair. So I hear you. I hear you, man. Well, look, I want to give a shout out to the entire uh, Stellar family for joining us today. Uh, shout out to my man Emir, Stellar Global. Um, I love all you guys out there. We got a really strong bunch. We're always talking and having a good time. Real intelligent conversations there. Um, and actually, this um, this event actually is inspired, you know, out of conversations in the Stellar Global community. Um, for, for, for those of you that don't know, uh, we have something called Stellar Global on Discord. And it's people from all over the globe that are veterans of Stellar and a lot of people that are new. And, you know, we come there and there's a lot of questions, a lot of misconceptions as well as to the Stellar ecosystem, how it works. Um, and... Being in my position, I get the fun opportunity to say, you know what, I'm going to go to the head source and get all of these questions answered. Um, and uh, I, I sent a direct message to, to Justin. He immediately hit me back up and said, Sam, whenever I'm down for it, let's do it. And, uh, and we're here. Shout out to Alvis. Alvis out there, Stella Austria. I see you, man. I appreciate you tuning in. Um, but uh, once again, I really appreciate it. We're going to go ahead and hop right into the show. Um, and uh, we're going to start directly. Uh, this is directly uh, on the Stellar website. Let's, um, if, if you haven't, if you haven't uh, visited the website yet, it's a great, great resource for all your Stellar needs. Um, they did a really good job. Uh, who put this together, um, Justin? You know, it, it, do you have any any background on the team that put this together? Yeah, uh, we. It was a team that was called Web Products at the time, and um, a lot of this was orchestrated by an, an office, an SDF office in New York City. Um, the goal at the time, the Stellar.org, it did exist. It had a lot of great information, but it was starting to get a little bit stale. Um, mm -hmm. And it was time to sort of bring it up to date, both sort of visually and also to organize 
information better and to organize information that really responded to the changes that that the that in the ecosystem um, since the original launch of the Stellar website back in 2015. And so um, the team was, you know, uh, Kyle McCollum was sort of leading the charge. He was he was managing the pro uh, the pr project. Um, Kyle, before working for SDF, had a really great Stellar resource that he created on his own um, called Luminots. Which Wait, hold up, hold up, Kyle, Kyle Luminots. Um, man, we we missed it, man. That was honestly a lot of our first entry into uh, understanding Stellar. So shout out to Kyle. We still love Luminots. <laughs> Go ahead, man. Yeah, I had to give a yeah, quick Luminots shout out to him. And, and Kyle sort of worked, you know, with a team of, of, of designers who who worked for SDF. So um, Tiffany, Marissa, and then developers um, Carl Morley and Aveta. Um, I, there, there are more people on that team. It was a pretty, pretty big team, um, and it, they sort of took took the idea. They looked at what existed um, on the exi on the existing Stellar.org. They they looked at benchmarks for other websites. They thought a lot about how what the new content should be and how best to organize it, and then how to sort of give it a look that made sense and that got a, that where the visuals themselves sort of supported the actual story of Stellar as it had evolved. Um, and so, yeah, they, they, they worked on the design, they worked on the information layout, they implemented it. Um, Charles, who is also a designer, did a lot to bring it in, it, like sort of give it its final shape. So it was it was definitely a team effort that was led by a team at SDF. But again, I, I do want to emphasize that a lot of what motivated it were, was not things necessarily that SDF was doing, it was things that were happening in the Stellar ecosystem. So as more and more projects get built, it's important to be able to describe them, to capture like sort of the stories that they're telling or the services that they offer and to organize it and render it in a way that makes the ecosystem as a whole more visible to someone who shows up. Because, at, you know, as, as one as some of the footage that you just, even in 2014, when, when the original clip that you showed where Joyce is describing Stellar and the Stellar Development Foundation, Stellar itself is an open network, open participation, anyone can build on it and it's open source, right? So anyone can contribute and create a product we, the Stellar Development Foundation, are the organization that supports the growth of that network. We, like anyone in the ecosystem, we're a community member. We're an ecosystem participant. So uh, the goal of the website is not just to sort of manifest what we, the SDF, are doing or who we are, but also to manifest what other people who are building on Stellar, what they're up to. Awesome. I'm bringing you on the screen so everybody can see you. Um... That was a great background. This is this is what it's all about. Getting to meet everybody that's uh, that's that's behind it because there's a lot of work that's being done that many people aren't aware of. Um, so let's start off here. So as you mentioned, it's a huge team. This is a great resource if you're new to Stellar. Um, definitely come out and 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 check this out. We're gonna focus on the tools. So if you come across here, you have Learn, right? Intro to Stellar, Power of Stellar, great background information. Um, we're going to focus this time today on tools. So I'm going to come down here, select see more tools and scroll down. And we're going to focus in the explore the network. Um, uh, how does that sound, Justin? That sounds good? That sounds great. I think that some of the questions that people have are pretty nuts and bolts. And using this section of the website and using these tools and specifically these explore the network tools is a really good way to actually understand what Stellar is and what's being done on Stellar. So I, I think this is a great point. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. So um, I started off here, just to, just to recap here, I went to Transaction Explorer and it popped open uh, the Stellar Expert. So what can you tell us about Stellar Expert? First of all, is this ran by the SDF? This is not. Um, Stellar Expert is run uh, by Orbit Lens, who if you're a part of the Stellar community, you probably come across his name a lot. He's a he's you know he has his own developers. He exists independently from the Stellar Development Foundation, and he built what is the premier blockchain explorer for Stellar. Um, I think this is a great resource. It can tell you it can show you everything that is happening on the network. So this is a great way to see, and we'll look in a minute. I think at what what the network itself is actually made of, but what's happening on the network? What are the accounts? What are the assets? What are the transition uh, tra transactions? Basically, like what is all of the activity that is contained in the ledger, 
and mm -hmm. what are the transactions that change the state of the ledger that's all all visible here and it's a super deep resource there's a ton here but almost every question that you have about stellar you can find an answer a, a specific data-driven answer by using stellar expert which again orbit lens does a fantastic job not only of maintaining the site but he's always adding new features and improving it and, and i think something that we can point out here um you know is that a lot of people might look at it and say well this is this is this is not now they're realizing for the first time this is not ran or controlled by the stf um, would you say that it's 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 a I guess another sign of just the decentralized nature of the ecosystem because you know it's not all dependent just on the development foundation you know that that's what you're saying this is an independently run um, yeah yeah that's that that is great that is great to yeah see. it's uh, it's independently run and I think to me that's that's really important the SDF has no desire to build every tool that that makes that <laughs> useful like we definitely want to encourage other people to build tools. People should be free, feel free to always build whatever they want. And, you know, our, our goal, like I said, we're just a, a, a participant in the ecosystem. Um, we are we are a fraction of what the ecosystem actually contains in terms of developers, projects, ideas, businesses. And it's cool that this, the premier blockchain explorer, was built not by SDF to me. And when I look at it, I'm like, you know, we couldn't, I, 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 that that is, it's unparalleled, like it is the premier blockchain explorer. We would not set out to make something that fulfilled this role because we don't have to, and we couldn't do as good of a job as Orbit Lens has done. So that's pretty awesome. And it is to me definitely evidence of decentralization. Yeah. So, all right, so let's kind of look at it here. Um, uh, kind of walk me through, so. So where, yeah. where are you on right now? If you just go to Stellar Expert, you end up on this landing page. And this landing page manifests certain information that Orbit has deemed relevant to sort of initially landing on the Stellar network. These are just like sort of high level canonical stats. Um, uh, if you sort of scroll up to the, all the way up to the top, you'll see that on, on the top right, it says that we're looking at the public network. You can change that public to testnet. So you can use Stellar Expert on both the public network and the test network. And the information that you'll see on this landing page is roughly the same for both. Um, okay. It will show you, it, you know, these sort of three boxes. It shows you all of the, the, the assets that exist that have been issued on the network. So now we're on the test network. Um, it will show you how the ledger has been behaving, um, what ledger number we're on. And then it will also show you these stats that show you how full ledgers are, uh, as well as a, just sort of a general um, graph of, of the total number of accounts on the network. Um, the number of new assets and trust lines. So it's it's just sort of this, this is like accumulates all of the information about what's going on on the network. But for now, as we look at it, I think you should go back and switch back to the public network because it is cool okay. right, that we have a fully functional blockchain for the test network. So if you're building a test product, you can use this to look at the transactions, for instance, or the app that you submit on the test network or the assets that you create on the test network. So like pretty cool, this tool is also for testing fully robust mm -hmm. for testing. But most of the information that I think people are interested in is on the public network. So just if people aren't aware, there are actually two Stellar networks. The test net, which is what it sounds like. It is, okay. a, it is a, a network where the assets don't represent things in the outside world. The value on it is it's play money, essentially. Um, okay. And when you build on the test network, it is super easy because you have to have a minimum lumen balance to have us an account on the ledger. It's very small. It's basically one lumen plus a half a lumen for anything, any other account entry. So if you create a trust line to another asset, you need an extra half a lumen. On the test network, you don't have to worry about acquiring the lumens to fund your balances because there's a thing called FriendBot. So you can start building on the test network and you just send a line of code to FriendBot and you say, please give me 10,000 test network lumens. So the okay. test network is cool because it's free to build on, free to use. The public network, however, is like the one when people talk about Stellar, this is generally what they're talking about. This is where the live assets are. This is where the lumens, uh, this is where like the actual lumens that were created uh, on the origin day of the network live. This is where when uh, regulated financial institutions issue an asset, this is where the real asset lives. So the test net, uh, the public network is, is sort of like the one, if you want to see what's actually going on on Stellar, this is probably where you want to look. So. Let's look at a public network. 
All right. Um, so <clears throat> let's go. So let's kind of continue here, right? So back on the page, um, you have assets, markets, network stats, um, and services. So before we go into that, um, let's kind of go through this first because I, I see this a lot. This comes up a lot. People talk about overall payments. Um, they talk about circulation, reserves. Can you kind of walk us through what exactly this means here? Sure. So these are the asset stats, and this combines the stats about two different kinds of assets. Um, basically, there are assets that people issue on the Stellar network, and Stellar is really made so that you can issue any asset, and it doesn't prefer one asset over another. In other words, it is a, a platform for universal issuance and exchange of assets. Um, and when it says, so this first line, it says unique assets, 9,024. That means mm -hmm. that 9,024 different tokens have been issued on a Stellar public network, which is a, a lot, a lot. Um, wow, yeah, that is a lot. And, and now, this could be anything from currencies to stocks to anything. That's right. It can be, and, and, when, and when you look at that number, that number is really, really high. And you might be thinking, you know, that, that represents all the world's currencies, you know, 10 <laughs> times over. But right. the truth is that a lot of those assets, some of those assets are really more relevant to general users. And some of those assets are still test tokens or they're very particular for some specific use case that someone's building out for. And so, again, the ecosystem is can issue all of these assets at the Stellar Development Foundation. Our goal is to increase you know, equitable access to financial infrastructure. So the assets that we most pay attention to um, just in terms of our mission, are the assets that represent something in the real world. So they they represent either a fiat currency or a stock or, or a commodity. Um, and those on-network assets can be redeemed for the underlying um, value that they represent, right? So we're interested in, you know, so, and there are not 9,024 of those kinds of assets. Um, that number is probably more in the hundreds, mm -hmm. which is still a lot. Right, there's still right. layers of assets that sort of represent something in the real world um, that you can, that can be redeemed for the underlying value that they represent. Um, so anyway, that's that's sort of the first step. Unique assets, there are nine thousand of those. I, I can't, you know, there's no exact number here, but definitely hundreds represent um, real world financial instruments. Nice. Does that nice. make sense? That makes sense. That makes sense. So I mean, this is great. I mean, we're talking about four hundred and eight billion. Um, or million, sorry, payments, overall payments, um, 45 million in DEX trades, uh, 5 billion in DEX volume, and then it goes in kind of circulation, reserved, and, and fee pool. So the XLM and circulation, this is the XLM that is out there available, you know, in, in individual hands and wallets, correct? That's correct. That's what it oh. means when it says in circulation. In okay, addition... Reserve. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. So... Um, the way that Orbit Lens does this, and again, you know, these are choice; these are design choices that he makes. And so, ultimately, I I'm going to speak to them. But if people have follow up questions, you can also always ask the, the actual creator of the site, Orbit Lens. And I, I want to put that out there that I I'm sort of giving my well reasoned answers as to why I think he makes these design decisions. But mm -hmm. I don't, I don't have um, sway. I don't have tons of insight other other than what I I've asked him. Um, these are these are these are the decisions that Stellar Expert makes, independent of what what SDF. You know, the, the, we don't make these decisions for them. They're they're very autonomous. Um, so, for me, here's why I'm saying that. For me, the the mm -hmm. XLM and circulation. So again, XLM is also called lumens. Lumens are the native asset of the Stellar network, and they're really necessary in order to prevent. Um, people from spamming the ledger by sending out a bunch of transactions. Like, um, they're also necessary to prevent people from just creating a bunch of arbitrary accounts that they don't really need. Um, mm -hmm. Because while it is very, very cheap to access Stellar, Stellar is a distributed ledger. And that means that all of the people that run Stellar infrastructure, and we'll look at who these people are in a minute, they're all keeping that data somewhere. And there is a cost. There's an operational cost to run a Stellar node or to run what, what's called Horizon, the Stellar API. And so it is necessary if you're going to grow a decentralized network like that 
to just try to make sure that the people who are the users, the developers who are accessing the network are doing so in a thoughtful manner. They're actually trying to achieve some results. They're not just bloating that ledger with um, arbitrary data storage, for instance, because uh, there is a cost, there is some cost to the people who maintain the infrastructure to, who, to keep the ledger. Specifically, right, it's just, it's a data storage and management cost. Um, you don't want to say, keep this database of 20 quadrillion accounts, right? right. If, if, if the majority of those accounts are just, are, don't, actu don't actually serve a purpose. So to incentivize purposeful use of the ledger, lumens are required, like I said, for reserves. You have to hold a very small amount to have an account and you have to have a small amount um, held in reserve, again, for any, um, any offer that you put onto the decentralized exchange and for any asset that you hold. And then lumens are also used for transaction fees. Long explanation. Well, no, but I think that's a Lumen good explanation theory. because, you know, even that, even to this point, I see this often discussed on Twitter, um, especially, you know, that, you know, trying to compare, you know, the Stellar network to other networks. And um, it's important for people to understand, you know, that, it, you know, in addition to, you know, cross border and, and those use cases that the Lumens, you know, serves an integral uh, position within the protocol itself. So that is that is very helpful. Um, yes. So going on here, and so you have the excellent reserved as well. And that's, that's yeah, something so, different, right? Yeah. So originally, when you'll, if you add up, well, on the, or, the origin day of the network, the, the sort of Genesis ledger when Stellar started, the native asset lumens were created like that um, mm -hmm. by and there were a hundred billion created and at the time you know when you see when you see that early footage of, of from 2014 they they sort of came up with that they reasoned about that number and came up with the number of lumens that they thought would be necessary to scale the network and gotcha. in 2019 essentially after after looking at the ecosystem itself and actually looking at, at a historical record of transactions right the track history of transactions what SDF realized was that there, that number was probably too high. And, the, and so we sort of reasoned about how the network would grow again in a more deliberate fashion and, just, and came to the conclusion that we needed to right size the lumen supply. So instead of there being 100 billion lumens, we realized that the network actually for its growth, it made more sense for there to be 50 billion lumens. And so what we did was that, so that, that sort of, and so at the moment, well, let me just rewind. At the beginning of the network, the lumens were custodied essentially, or they custody is not the right word. They were um, managed, they were stewarded, I think is the right word, by the Stellar Development Foundation. And then at that moment, we made the SDF, and this was before I worked there, but here, but uh, they basically said, okay, we've got these lumens and we, our goal is to, is to create this network that allows all these different currencies to interoperate. Our mission is to do that in a way that increases financial inclusion. And the lumens that we have, we will distribute them um, based on the sort of objectives that, that we outline that will help us achieve that goal and achieve that mission. So when we right size the loop, which means that at the beginning of the network, the lumens were stewarded entirely by SDF. And over the course of, of the years, those lumens have made it 21 million, the circulating supply has made it okay. out into the hands of other people. So like you said, those are in various people's wallets. Um, the SDF still had a huge, you know, in, in its to, yet to distribute a, a large number of those lumens. And so when I say that we right size the lumen supply, what we did was that we took 50 billion of those lumens, and we sent them to a locked account. Um, okay. So okay. 50 billion of those, move, of those lumens actually moved out of circulation and into an account that can no longer sign any transactions. So they are now essentially withdrawn from circulation. So I would say that the actual number, and, and, and SDF publishes a number about, it, and all of the methodology for determining lumen circulation, the lumen circulating supply, and the number that we have is slightly different it's not this high because 
when I look at XLM reserved, that includes the 50 billion that we locked. So the actual number is, you know, more like 30, 30 billion or whatever 83 minus 50 is, I think, is what I would say is the lumens that are reserved because I would make the distinction between the, the 50 billion that are burned, in other words, will never, can never be accessed. And then right. the, the rest of the lumens that the SDF has that we distribute based on our mandate. And also, and if you, by the way, I just want to, if you go to stellar.org and you look for the mandate page, you will literally see a list of the accounts, the SDF accounts that hold lumens and what each of those accounts, um, what the lumens in each of those accounts are destined to do. And you can watch the payments, you can watch the outgoing payments. So all of this stuff where we locked away 50 billion lumens and where we still have a certain amount in reserve that we're, that we're in the process of distributing, all super, super public. So that's that's neat. And I think, um, you know, maybe after this, we can actually go to that and, and take a look at it. Um, the last question I have here is so we talked about circulation. We understand the reserve pool. That's where, you know, it, it's basically a locked account. Um, and then we have the XLM fee pool. Can you describe what the fee pool is? Yeah, as I mentioned, in order to incentivize uh, or disincentivize bad act, large scale bad actors, essentially, there when you make a transaction on Stellar, when you make a payment or make a trade, there's a small um, fee, and that fee is paid in lumens. And we can actually talk a little bit about how fees work on Stellar if we have time. But okay. I'm going to skip that discussion for now, and I'm going to say the fees go into something called the fee pool, and there used to be a, uh, a an operation on Stellar called inflation, um, and inflation is what uh, it sounds I remember like. inflation. <laughs> yeah, a certain a certain number of every week, uh, a certain number of new lumens were basically generated, and and it was to one percent annually, essentially inflation. Um, after discussing that with the community and the ecosystem at large. Um, the validators on the network, the people that run Stellar Network nodes, they accepted a change that uh, was proposed in code to the fun fundamental underlying code that runs the Stellar Network, Stellar Core. They accepted a change that turned off inflation. And inflation not only generated this, these lumens, these extra lumens that, over the course of a year, it also distributed the fees that were collected in the same process. And so now the fee pool like the uh, locked accounts, the fees are collected and they go nowhere. They just they just sit in a pool that is not distributed. It's it's locked away. Interesting. So um, so this is something else that I think you know a lot of people um, you know have questions on. Uh, what you're saying is is that um, the fees that are that are spent out on the transactions are essentially burnt. Is essentially what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's correct. Okay. They don't go to the SDF. They don't go to network validators. They're just, at this point, they used to be redistributed via inflation, and now they're essentially burned. There's okay. a slight distinction, but that's essentially true. Right. So, yeah. So, Antonio, I know Antonio was just asking that. Hopefully that answers your question, Antonio. Um, that's what happens with, with the fees um, at this time. They're, they're currently uh, they're currently burnt. So um, let's let's move on. Let's look at some. Um, what about some of uh, let's see services? I, so one thing I really like is the services. And there's a lot of different services and things that you can do with Stellar Expert. But my favorite is the accounts directory. So if you click on accounts directory, um, this is something that you can actually add to. There's there's a way to suggest adding a tag to a specific account. But let's okay. uh, let's look at the um, let's look at the exchange. If you click on the box above uh, the top left hand that says exchange, we're essentially saying let's see all the accounts marked exchange. And what you'll see wow. here is that Orbit Lens, with community help, has essentially identified all of the Stellar accounts that belong to crypto exchanges. So here they are. You know. Where, where is Kraken account? If you click on that account, you'll see the Kraken activity. And, and you can also see how these exchanges use Stellar. You know, um, Some have a cold storage. Some have a, you know, they, they structure their interactions differently. But okay. I love the fact that this, this account um, directory allows you to actually start looking at all of the known accounts. Um, and if you go back, back, so this is, yeah, you can just like, if you want to see the activity that Kraken is undertaking, this is it. 
Um, wow. Same thing if you go back to that and instead you look at, say, SDF accounts, um, bottom, not exchange, yeah, SDF. This will show you all of those accounts. Remember I said we clearly label our accounts and what yes. they're for. And yes. you'll see that here you go, that, that SDF ecosystem currency support, that's where the currency grants that we give to anchors to set up on-off ramps, it's where those lumens come from. So okay. if you click on that, you, you know, you'll see, you'll see outgoing payments. Um, okay. And you'll and those represent currency support grants. Because I know and a lot of times, directly, you know, some, like sometimes too, we'll get like, uh, you know, there's a there's a, a a Twitter bot I think out there. Every time there's like a big movement, it's like, uh oh, a bunch of XLM are being moved, uh, <laughs> and people start freaking yeah. out. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah. yes. And, so so this is kind of cool. where where you kind you kind of look at it and and see exactly. And, and I think it's really neat that all the accounts, like you said, are labeled and, um, mm -hmm. and real easy. So go ahead. I'm sorry. You, you were going to say? Oh, well, I, the great thing about all of this is, you know, this, the, the, the network is, is public, right? So all of this information is stuff that you can sort of reason about and come up with and, and, and label if you put in the effort. And what's cool about that for me is that it just increases transparency. I mean, I will say that from my point of view as as a community member and also SDF employee, sort of one in the same, like it's mm -hmm. cool that, you, you know, can't hide much, right? You gotta, right. you gotta be pretty open. And I feel like that, that the, the transparent nature of it is one of the most attractive things to me personally about blockchain, right? There's no, there's no dark corners. There's no, there's no way to, you know, it's, it's difficult at least to to do anything that is does not shown in the light of day and and right. and that keeps thing you know keeps the mold out you know well um i guess you know how about how about we go ahead while we um i know we could probably spend some more time here but let's let's look at some other tools that are available um yeah so let's i would let's say just back. for anyone the one the one final thing i want to say is anyone sure. who is is using that transaction explorer the one great thing to do is you that search box up in the right, you can search for anything. You can search for, you know, you can search for an account, you can search for a transaction, you can search for an operation, you can search. So um, if you have some piece of information and you want to know more, you can just always put it in that search box and you'll find it. Cool. So, um, so let's go here and let's look at the Node Explorer. So let's, so this is a uh, stellar beats. So I'm going to ask yeah. this question and based on the last answer I got, uh, I think I know what it is. Is this controlled or ran by the SDF? It is not. Um, oh, stellar beat right. is a, is a node explorer and it is not also, again, it is not run by the SDF. It is run by a, a person named Peter Yan, um, who, who built Peter this Jan. again from scratch. Um, wow. and I, it's like, I can't even imagine building something this good. Like he did such a great <laughs> job and he's also always adding features to it. He's thinking about what people might want to know. Um, and he's wow. adding more and more and more features. It's pretty awesome. So I'm looking at this public network and I'm, I'm seeing a lot of different nodes. Um, a lot of folks out here I and mean, even some names I recognize. I see pay with glasses out there. We see Armageddon. That's, uh, mm -hmm. that's, uh, Tiffany. Tiffany. Um, yeah, yeah, Tiffany Hayden. Shout out to her being a part. Um, you got Lobster. So um, let me. Ask, so here's a question that I know I get all the time: that Stellar is the it, Stellar is centralized, and you know it, it's all dependent on on the SDF. And if if Jed goes to sleep tonight and something happens, it, it's all going downhill. Is that yeah. true? A answer the question, is, Justin. Is it true? No, it is not no, true. It is not no, true. man. It is wait, not no. True. It is so not true. Like, and, and that's, you know, again. No, you tool, ruined my conspiracy. Even the, tool, <laughs> even the tools we're looking at, right? These tools exist with or without SDF. So you can not only, you can not only will the network itself sustain, but like all the tools that give you access to it, those will be there too, you know? Wow. Um, this is actually a great example, the most literal example that I can give you about how the, about how the network does not rely on SDF 
how it is decentralized. So yeah. as you pointed out, this is a graph. This is a node, a graph of the nodes on the network and how they all interconnect. And the lines between them show basically when you set up a Stellar node you're and you validate, that means that you agree to vote on transaction sets. So you've got a computer. It looks at a transaction set. It says, cool, let's, let's apply this and change the ledger. So all of these payments, great. And every five seconds or so, all the nodes on the network, they vote on the transaction sets to apply to the ledger. Um, anyone can run one of those nodes, right? You don't okay. need permission. There is no, you don't sign up. You just spin up a node. And then what you do is you start to Wait, I, you mean it's, it's not network. like an application? I don't have to call SDF and and get an interview to start a node, none of that? <laughs> That's right. It's not. It's, <laughs> it's not. And, and I know that might sound weird, but, you know, like certain other networks do require permission. Even things like the App Store, right? Like if you want to put an app on the App Store, Apple right. has to give you permission. If you want right. to spin up a Stellar node, SDF has nothing. Like we will get, we, you can, we have the code. It's open source. You take <laughs> the code, you, you install it. And you start running, right? And, and we will even give you instruct. Like what we do is we help maintain that code, and we write documents that help you understand how to use it. But it's fully self serve and permissionless, right? So you set up one of these nodes. You like add the other nodes that you want to basically. That when you like basically when you have a node, for your node to agree to say a transaction set every five seconds, it has to essentially have a quorum, a, a number of other nodes that vote on the validity to. That, that transaction set is valid. And you choose whom those other nodes are. So your node says, I want to look at, you know, the, the, the people who run nodes that I trust, here they are. If they agree to a transaction, my node will agree to a transaction. It's essentially gotcha. what happens. And you'll see that right now, this super tight cluster is what we sort of loosely refer to, or not even loosely, we explicitly call this the tier one validators. What okay. that is, is a group of organizations that have been building on Stellar in one way or another for a pretty long time, most of them, they all have some business interest uh, in sort of in maintaining the network. So they run nodes. But not only do they run nodes, they run three nodes. Those nodes publish history archives. So they are sh sharing the whole history of the network where anyone can see it. And they have really good uptime. These nodes essentially never go down. And so these people that make up the tier one, they're there because they've been doing it a long time. And they've proven that they have the capacity to do a good job running nodes, so they're trustworthy. And as a result, they sort of glommed on to one another and they are in close cooperation and they work together to make sure that the network, to, like they are each a pillar supporting the network. But what's, right. and what's interesting is that one of those pillars, as you'll see on the left when it says explore organizations, you'll see that one of those pillars is the Stellar Development Foundation, but only one. And here's one wow. cool thing about Stellar Deep. Click Say on that SDF one more time. On so, Stellar. so, so you said there's only one over there. That's is that Stellar. So, let's click on let's click on this right here. Yep. And what you'll see is you'll see that we have three nodes. Like I said. So, why three nodes? It's because when you put your trust, when you're building out your quorum set, and you're saying here are the nodes that I care about. You actually don't trust the node itself. You trust the organization running the node. And so, what you do is you group the little. You basically say. Okay, I need S, S, I need say Wirex, for instance, to I, they're in my quorum set. I, I won't ratify a transaction. I won't agree to it unless essentially Wirex agrees. Um, okay. But you don't actually want each Wirex node. You just want Wirex the organization to agree. And so you say if two out of three Wirex nodes agree, I'm going to count that as Wirex agreeing, right? So the reason why that's true is because then when Wirex needs to update their software, they can take down a node to install say a the newest version of Stellar Core, without without disappearing from the network. So three, uh, you know, a group of three nodes allows a hundred percent an organization to maintain a hundred percent uptime. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. More perfect sense. Yeah. So and I mean, what's so this, cool, is, this is really cool. What's cool? One, I just want to say one cool thing that I think is a pretty great illustration of of how the network is decentralized. So Stellar Beat not only manifests all of this information that you can look at. Um, it also has simulation capability. So yeah. let me see. You can you can mock, you can be like, okay, here's the model of the network. Now I'm going to move into simulation mode and I'm going to start turning off nodes. So huh. look at the so network. There is this it is. right here? Is now, right, right here? Uh, no, don't. That would be simulating creating a new node, but go up okay. to SDF 
one up there under validators. So down a little bit, click there. Oh, click okay. the, the three dots. Sorry. Click okay. the three dots beside it and say stop validating. Boom. So you are now simulating what happens if we turn off that valid. Now turn off SDF three and two, turn them both off. This All is right. a simulation of what happens if the Stellar Development Foundation leaves the network entirely. So as you can see, like some of those nodes on the periphery that have gone red, those people right. probably need to improve their quorum sets. But right. all of the nodes that remain connected, they remain connected because they have enough um, validators in their quorum set to still keep validating transactions. And as you can see, there's still like the majority of the network still overlaps. Are still going. And so, I mean, yeah, I think that's great. Yeah. Um, I mean, look at that. Look at that. So, I mean, well, that answers that question. Stellar did not shut down. <laughs> the Stellar network yeah. did not shut down with all uh, all um all, all of the validators uh down so that is yeah that that is really 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 cool and so you just yeah click, it's pretty cool boom, there's actually enough redundancy where you can yeah you turn it back on and, and you'll just like sort of see see that on the periphery of the network right some people had trouble um when, when you turn off sdf not a whole lot and right, those are people right, that right. probably just need, need my guess is that those are people that don't um, you know, they're, they're just kind of entering into the world of validation. They haven't totally figured out what, how, how to best set it up. And probably it doesn't matter to them too much. I would say that most organizations that really care about having, um, about participating in the network, they, they figure this stuff out. Um, and again, that's, you know, SDF, we try to provide resources to make it possible for people to do this. And we join in these discussions about the best way to sort of set up the nodes so that there is good overlap and the network coheres but we're just a participant in those discussions right. even I, if, I think this even is great. Not, like even if sdf went away like all those other validators that are still validating like and i'm talking about beyond we just turn off our nodes like let's just say we you know we literally just disappeared some weird black hole swallowed up every sdf employee all those validators they're still in contact with one another right so they would just be like bummer about sdf getting eaten up by a black hole um pretty <laughs> cool that we all Jen know was working on an experiment in the back room or something <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there might be some dark dark ops uh section of the world that's just you know working <laughs> on black holes to swallow up you know blockchain <laughs> participants but i hope not <laughs> yeah, I hope not too. I like you guys. You guys are pretty cool. So, um, all right. So that's Stellar Beat. Um, you know, like I said, that's some of the the questions there about you know just the centralization. We just uh, busted that myth. Um, it's clearly yeah. not centralized. Um, there's clearly balance, and this is only going to increase. It's only going to grow um, as time as the network grows, as as more as more businesses. Um, you know, start to start to uh, uh, you know be created and, and grow on the network. It's only going to get better. So, do you think we're done pretty much yeah, with Stellar it, Beat? You want to move on to the next one? Absolutely. All right. So let's go to the next one here. Uh, the dashboard. This is the live metrics yes. Stellar public sheet. And um, boom, here we go. So the dashboard is the one of these tools that the SDF actually does maintain. And as you can see. It has less depth and complex complexity than either of those other tools. So, like, I think we do a lot of stuff great, but I'm I'm so glad that that the ecosystem has enough smart people outside of SDF who can actually build better tools because this tool is useful, but obviously it's not it's not as deep or complex or sophisticated as the other two. So, it has some real use though. You know that little pulsing beat up there. Mm -hmm. That shows you that the live network is up and running, and it shows you that you can watch as new ledgers close. So like I was saying, every five seconds or so, all the validators vote on a transaction set and apply it to the ledger. And you can see how long it's taking, and you can see the ledgers increment up as each wow. round of consensus closes. So every time that happens, that means, and you can, if you scroll down, you can actually see some of the recent operations that are being added. But basically, operations are getting collected by the nodes, they're getting voted on, they're being applied. And then the whole thing starts over. You oh, can right see what here. Some of those okay. operations are. Yeah. 
but that top thing just kind of shows you the the progression is just incrementing up, incre it's up and running, incrementing up, incrementing up. Um, this here, now that we're scrolling down, remember what I was saying about how we how I might calculate the lumen supply differently. Well, this is the manifestation of what I am saying. Okay. Whereas orbit lens basically said there were 83 billion reserved lumens. For me, I what I, how I would describe it. Again, this is just my point of view, but it's what the dashboard manifests. Um, the total <laughs> supply is 50 billion because we locked 50 billion away and that means that the non-circulating supply in other words the lumens that are uh stewarded by the sdf and that we're giving away that's there are 27 billion still a lot to give away um and then the uh circulating supply th those are the ones that are out in hand so this is this is the sdf's take on the lumen circulating supply if you click underneath it you can see how we calculate so see where it says lumen supply metrics right there if you ever want to know how we calculate this, you know, mm -hmm. again, we are trying to be, oh, actually, this is the old docs version. This is actually another thing. We, we oh, are in the process. New, new, new documentation yeah, click, right here. Click new docs, yeah. Yeah, this, I, I need to change that link. So this is actually, this is a slightly better looking version of the same information. Um, this is how SDF calculates the lumen supply metrics. I think it, it should make sense if you dig into that. Um, okay. So... And so it also shows here, you know, um, at, at, at a certain point and not too distant future, the, um, the non-circulating supply is going to be less than the circulating supply. As, Correct, yeah. So that's, that, that's, that's interesting. Is there any idea, like, kind of time frame, or that's, there's no time frame? It's just kind of like a, as projects and opportunities kind of arise? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's more the latter. I mean, I would say that in, in general... I would have to double check. I, I believe that there is some sort of rough time frame, but we're talking about over the course of years of a goal to get to some number, but I don't remember off the top of my head what it is. But really, if you, uh, and we can look at it in a minute, um, if you look at the mandate, you'll see that the goal is not just merely to get women circulating, it's mm -hmm. to get women circulating in order to uh, support the network. And so, the uh you know there are public reasons there are public programs that the lumens are allocated to support and and here they are yeah the sdf mandate and so part of the answer about about how the speed has to do with um the appetite you know as there are more you, you'll see that there's a there's like a currency grants on here if you look at ecosystem support it outlines where those lumens go, and and part of it is currency support. So, gotcha. uh, and this will explain exactly what currency support is, but just in terms of how it affects time, the more currencies there are to support, in other words, the more uh, independent actors set up on off ramps, the, the 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 quicker the currency support grants will go out. So, part gotcha. of the speed of the allocation is determined by the actual development of, of the ecosystem the appetite to to like build stuff so cool 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 um well i think i mean th this has been really great if, if we have a, we have a couple more minutes here um wanted to go through some of those stellar global questions if that's all right with you yeah let's do it let's do it all right so um yeah once again i appreciate you taking the time here to to go through everything um you know we went through a went through the network we uh kind of hashed through a lot of the myths and questions that a lot of people have uh and um uh had a couple couple folks that are really passionate out there in the stellar global team that posted some questions and i'm gonna go ahead and share them so um cram Clo, one of our um really busy members uh first question is from him how does the s decks compete and attract liquidity when many L1 DEXs, layer one DEXs, will be optimizing in the near future or are currently up and running on L2s, so zero to low fees become negligible and no longer selling points? It's a really good question. Um, I, first of all, I want to say that the real goal is not necessarily to have a decentralized exchange per se. The real goal is to have liquidity. So essentially, if you think about what Stellar is good for, um, it is really good for these cross-border and cross-currency transactions. It's really good at representing 
all the world's currencies and, and essentially stores of value are economic financial instruments on, on a single platform. What you want to be able to do for Stellar to really work uh, and to be able to do the things that you want to do with it, right? You want to be able to easily transmute or convert from one currency to another. The DEX is one method for creating liquidity. But I think mm -hmm. really my, what I think is that we can also step back and say, okay, that's a solution. But are there, like, basically, what, what, uh, let's think outside the box. What are all the different ways that we can create liquidity? And I think the answer, the answer is to improve the DEX. The answer is also to start to think about how automated market makers might interact with Stellar. The answer might be to try to set up some kind of over-the-counter um, mechanisms for essentially enacting these uh, conversions. And the, I think that for, in general, this is a question that is coming from all parts of the ecosystem. And it's one that we at SDF are also asking ourselves. So I'm kind of just kicking the can down the road here, but I got to <laughs> say liquidity and the different solutions to liquidity are a major focus of a lot of the SDF teams this year. Okay. And so I think that, well, I don't have a really specific answer to this question, I do believe that we are going to have specific answers uh, within, like, over the course of the year. I think it's a big focus for SDF for the year. But second, I also want to say, I think it's a big focus for the ecosystem in general for the year. I have, today I even heard of another one. I've talked to six different organizations outside of SDF that are mm. all trying to figure out how to create better liquidity. Um, and the wow. solutions are through, you know, they're through AMMs or liquidity pools. There are a lot of projects that are either in the spec stage or the proof of concept stage. And wow. I think we're going to see those projects come to fruition right around the same time. For me, I'm hoping that in, within months even, there will be a number of projects independent of SDF because there's so much enthusiasm and so much intelligence being brought to bear to answer this very question. How do we improve liquidity? I think we're going to have some really cool answers and you know i can't get into the details until they're a little bit more formed there's nobody are, listening it's just a hundred people <laughs> calm down like come on some of them is... might even be on these projects that's the thing like i, I, I like i'm so tense uh, you know it's part of me just wants to like say this person's working on it and they've got this idea and this person's working right, on it right, got that right, idea. Right. <laughs> but at the moment none of those people have said we're ready to share publicly to share. no that, no definitely know. respect yeah. i mean even on my end i you know I'm sure a lot of people that I've spoken to, they can attest that I keep it club, I keep it shut, man. I keep it shut. Uh, yeah. I want to see people working because uh, we know how it is, right? We know how it is. But I, I think it's it's this it, it is great. You know, I'm seeing you know people getting excited in the comments section. They're retweeting stuff right now. It's exciting just to hear, um, and I think for people to see how real the network is. So you, you opened up yeah, a lot of cans. All, all... Let, let me let me go through some more questions. Let me go through some more questions. Okay. Hold on, hold on. All right, so. All right, updates on Project Slingshot and the ZKVM. Um, any any updates? Any updates there? And I guess I'm, I'm gonna wrap them all together. So Project Slingshot, ZKVM, and the Turing Complete Contract functionality. Okay, sure. Uh, well, let me start with that one. The Turing Complete Contract functionality, or T Turing Signing Servers. That's an idea that Tyler, who is on the ecosystem team and works with me at SDF, sort of led the charge on. Um, and at this point. That work is inspiring a lot of these people. Like when I say that there are a bunch of people in the <laughs> ecosystem working on projects, a few of them are working on um, proofs of concept that are specifically designed based on the Turing signing server idea. So I think we're going to start to see some traction on that. I think there's still a lot that needs to be figured out and some security audits that need to be done. But I think we'll have proofs of concept and we'll do security audits and we'll figure out if and how that concept works. But again, it's not even the only way to, to sort of create smart contract functionality or bring things like AMMs to Stellar. And all this stuff is being done in parallel. It's going to be awesome. So that's that. The, uh... I had to add that, man. Uh -huh. You hyped me up. <laughs> you hyped me up. Go ahead, man. Keep talking. Okay. Get relax. <laughs> and then Have the, uh, a drink. Keep ZKBM. talking. Go ahead. <laughs> ZKBM, I think that, you know, the, the best way to follow progress on that is just if, if you're at all technicals to check out the, the GitHub repo for ZKBM. Um, ZKVM, along with a few other ideas, are being sort of put into some, again, testing to build out what what is a more general side net. And I would say that ZKVM has made a lot of progress, and I 
a lot of it is honestly, I, I don't fully, I haven't fully wrapped my head around the technical aspects of it. So I check that repo for updates. But I do know that ZKVM, along with a lot of the thoughts uh, for other things that have maybe even had names, like, you know, they're all being used as kind of like inputs to try to build out some kind of layer two or a side net. And, you know, I think that, again, there are projects underway that are trying to take all those inputs and talk to stakeholders, people in the ecosystem who would need this and say, okay, what, what does it actually need? Does it need, does it need to be faster to handle a, a lot more transactions better? Does it need mm -hmm. to be private? You know, what are the different considerations? And I think that, you know, it's a big project to build in both these cases. You're essentially saying Stellar exists. Now let's build something on the side, a parallel network that can, that can settle on Stellar. And so there's a lot of technological considerations and a lot of just like functionality considerations. And I know I'm kind of saying the same thing here, right? but so, okay. some kind of side net project is again, a big focus for this year. And I think we're going to see a lot of progress there. Uh -oh, so uh -oh, uh -oh, it's hold awesome. on, hold on. DJ horn, DJ horn. <laughs> side net, side net project. That's, that's exciting. That's exciting. That's exciting. Yeah. And it's good. It's cool. Like, I wish I had the results of all that work, but like I said, it's a lot of work. Um, the cool thing is that these questions that you are asking, I'm really happy to hear them because I feel like the just with the finger on the pulse, the sense that I've gotten and that most of the people that I've talked to have gotten is that these are these are the big issues to work on. And so I'm glad that there's some agreement and some consensus about the right questions and issues. And I'm glad to know that we at SDF are working on them, and a lot of other people are too. We're 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 gonna yeah, you know, them. man, it, it's it's going down in Stellar Global, man. We 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 got we got some we got some sharp sharp people in there, sharp sharp people Absolutely. in there, you know. Um, and I appreciate them, Cram Clo. Um, we're gonna oh my, he's got, he's got a couple more. So, um, SDX, um, and you might have touched on this. Um, and there's actually somebody that on on Twitter ask this so i'm gonna kind of combine these questions together it comes down to interoperability is there is there thoughts you know you have sushi you got uniswap um you've got ethereum polka dot is there any any is there, is there any goal or plan of you know looking to make the s decks interoperate with some of these other chains and you know i'm assuming to be able to go from one to the next you know easily um, yeah, I think I think some of the work that I'm talking about when I say that there are six different proposals, some of some of them are very directly tackling uh -oh. that as as, uh -oh. as a possible solution. Uh oh, uh oh, I gotta do it one more time. Hold up! Oh, 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 oh. all right, man. Hey, I didn't I didn't think we were gonna get this crunk uh, uh, this 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 afternoon, <laughs> man. With you dropping some heat today. All right, so uh, let's let's go. So this is from Dumbo, and I I told him he's no Dumbo. He's no Dumbo. <laughs> um, but Dumbo says, how critical... Uh, well, this is kind of from the other one. So he asked about how critical smart contract function for Stellar. You talked about that. That is a high priority. Um, interoperate with others. We talked about that. That's in the works. We're talking about that. We are looking to interop uh, interoperate, so that's good to see. Um, you tagged on this earlier slightly, but plans and timelines for AMM on Stellar. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's I, I will say it's it's very much. When so when I'm talking about these different projects, they're essentially circling around the same issues, which are how mm -hmm. to. I think the ultimate goal is to create liquidity, but the methods for doing that essentially allow the creation of the settling of smart contracts on Stellar, that which allows the creation of automated market makers, which improves liquidity. Um, and, and another approach is to interoperate with other networks that already have the capabilities to do this. And I think, like I said, AMMs, smart contracts, Turing complete uh, ideas, uh, as well as things like liquidity pools and interoperating with other networks that provide those services. These are all the different pro the, the, these the projects that I'm talking that I have talked to are taking various pieces of all of those approaches. And eventually, I think we'll have a story, right? Where we're like, right. if you want to do any of these things using Stellar, you have these options, right? And here's how, you, and I think it, ultimately the goal will be to facilitate like the, and support the creation of those projects and also to have people understand um, 
how they interrelate, to have the people who are working on them start to collaborate, and to have a, a way ultimately, like I, I imagine that at some point, part of my role will be like, okay, I just got to document all this stuff and mm -hmm. point you to it. So I'll say, there are, there are these five different projects, they do these five slightly different things, here's what they are, here's where you find them, and here's what you can use them for. Um, and I, I see that, again, a lot of it depends, there's a lot of moving pieces, but mm -hmm. I can see put, starting to put those pieces together, you know, and I, I, I don't know. He wants for to say. Sure. He he wants to say something, y'all. He wants to say. I know. I want to say. <laughs> I'll just say. I think we're talking about in months, not you know, within not, the year, right? Not nice. Not, we're not talking about this isn't a years long thing. This is like we, we we're it's it's moving. Yeah. You know, shout out to Stella Zach. He's out there in the in the comments. You know, chatting. Um, you know, much love out to him, my friend. Um, just a couple more questions while I got you here. I know you're a busy man. You're talking about all this work. I need you to get back to work. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So let me go ahead and get you ready. <laughs> all right, a couple more things. So um, Circle, right? We've got USDC coming to the market um, in the near future. I think sometime estimated in February. Um, mm -hmm. So I, some of the questions is, you know, how does that interact with uh, with Stellar? Um, is it, is it something that goes onto the decks? Is it something that people can, can bring into their apps? I guess any more background yes. you can give on, on, on how that impacts the Stellar ecosystem. Yeah, sure. Um, we did publish a USDC FAQ, which you can search for that has answers to some of these questions, but that's mm -hmm. really just the beginning of our storytelling or messaging or what we know about USDC. Um, here's what I, here's what I can tell you the, that currently the, what that FAQ says, and I think is relatively reasonable, is that they're planning to launch USDC on in around February. By launch, that means that they that Circle is issuing a USDC asset on Stellar. So it is like any stable coin on Stellar. It is one to one backed. Um, okay. And that means like a USDC represents a US dollar in the bank. Their goal of USDC is to start to work with other Stellar anchors, people that provide on off ramps. And so an independent company will essentially offer to handle compliance and KYC checks and stuff like that. So when a customer wants to deposit U, uh, US dollars and get USDC on the network, they'll work through a third party anchor who represents, who sort of has a contract with USDC. So, like, what, what it essentially becomes is that there will be what we call non-issuing anchors. In other words, anchors, as, as you currently know them, that are on off ramps. But instead of offering you their own asset when you re, when you deposit a dollar or giving you one back uh, or accepting redemption of their own asset in order uh, in return for a dollar in the bank account, they'll be using USDC. So, okay. uh, and so it will work a lot like other. Um, I mean, that's kind of that's kind of nitty gritty, right? Like it's. That matters if you're a business because there's an opportunity for businesses to integrate or to be an anchor for USDC. Um, for apps that are building on Stellar, they'll be able to integrate those anchors just like any other Stellar anchors. So if you have a wallet that interoperates with anchors to allow users to make deposits and withdrawals, you'll be able to do that probably through one of these uh, anchors that offers USDC. And so it will become an asset that is available on the network just like any other asset and it has these regulated on off ramps just like any other stable coin. Okay. Um, when you issue an asset on Stellar, it can automatically go onto the DEX. Like for it to be on the DEX, what that really means is that someone's offering to sell it, right? That's it. Right. The DEX is just a collection of people offering to buy or sell a given asset. And mm -hmm. so as soon as, I mean, there will be market makers, I believe. Okay. That will work to create a liquid market for USDC, but you know theoretically anyone who has USDC can offer to sell it, and and by selling it, by putting in a sell offer, they automatically that asset goes onto the Dex. And I believe the one issue can be that assets can be auth required, which means that the issuer has to approve the account holder. Um, and I'll have to double check, but what, from my understanding right now, USDC is not an auth required asset. Um, that the, the sort of access control is done at the on off ramp level, which basically mm -hmm. means to sort of get to the fundamentals of the question will USDC 
be widely available? Um, yes. And the caveat is, is once businesses start to integrate USDC, um, it will be, it will sort of like work just like other stellar assets, but it has advantages. You know, it has, it can interoperate like it is a, you can, you can use circle to essentially swap USDC stellar for USDC ETH. So it nice. builds an instant bridge between stellar and Ethereum. That's very easy to use. And it has pretty good liquidity. There are a lot of people out there and, and, and exactly how all that, that can, the sort of how that converges um, into, um, I, I, I think we'll, we'll start to see a little bit more as we get closer to February. And I think it will be pretty cool. It's going to be cool. Yeah, I think it'll be pretty cool. So let me finish up here. Um, like I said, I'm going through a lot of the stellar global questions that were submitted in advance. Um, and it's we're a little bit over an hour, so I want to wrap up here. And let's, uh, let's wrap up with... Um, uh, vibrant. That was a, a, a big a, a big discussion that uh, that, that uh, was announced last year. Um, is there any more that you can share about it? Um, you know, I know that it's in the, it's in a kind of a soft launch right now. Um, what are what's kind of the plans for um, for vibrant in in twenty twenty one? That's a really good question. I think there there are two interesting things about vibrant. One is the product itself. Um, the vibrant is out there. It's oper It's it's fully live in Argentina, and people are using it. And like any new product, the vibrant team is doing a lot of analytics to try to figure out how to improve things, like conversion rates, right? So they want people to sign up and to finish the flow and to deposit uh, ARS Argentinian pesos and get ARST and to exchange those for U.S. dollars. You can do all of that right now, and so they're in the process now of optimizing that whole flow, um, and so. I think that they have, that they are making a lot of progress, making it just like improving the app. And as it improves, I think you'll just see more and more emphasis and more and more advertising. They'll just be pushing it out further and further into the world. So it's kind of like right now, it's like when you say it's a soft launch, that's pretty accurate. Like it's out there, it's usable. They're promoting it some, they're optimizing it. And when they feel like it's fully optimized, I think that's when you'll see an even bigger push, right? Mm -hmm. And that's cool. It's, it's going very well. Then the second thing about Vibrant that's interesting is that Vibrant also is pushing along certain like knowledge and about the standards. So like I said, when I'm talking about USDC interoperating with wallets, it means that like you can use a wallet like Vibrant currently to make an in-app deposit of or withdrawal. So you can in Vibrant say, I want to deposit ARS and you'll get your ARS, our ARST token, the tokenized version in your wallet. For that to work, there's like, all these standards that need to be set up that essentially make it easier for the wallet and the anchor to interact via API. And Vibrant is really cool because it it pushes those standards forward. And already, if you just like look at the standards for interoperation, the Stellar ecosystem proposals mm -hmm. that deal with that, specifically SEP 10, SEP 12, SEP 24, you'll see that there's been a lot of tweaking um, and that some of that tweaking has been motivated by discoveries that Vibrant has made and, and the partners that they partner with, the anchors that they've made mm -hmm. together. So in addition to Vibrant sort of getting out there and being a product, which is happening, it is also pushing forward these standards um, in a way that you can't do if you're just cerebral about them, right? Like it's outside the ivory tower and out there where the rubber meets the road. It's been really, really amazing what you discovered, what they've discovered. Well, that's great, man. Look, it is, uh, it's been a great chat. I think we're going to have to uh, maybe schedule another one of these when once, uh, you know, some other milestones, you know. I, I think what's really cool to kind of wrap this up is that we spent so much time only speaking on a fraction of the announcements and the projects uh, and the developments that are happening on Stealth. This is only a small fraction. I mean, we didn't touch on and what's going on in Germany with the bank. There's so much we didn't we didn't touch on. So um, I really appreciate your time, Justin. Uh, maybe when uh, USDC uh, launches, we'll do another one of these and start talking about how businesses can interact with the network and some of the other things. And, you know, we got credit cards, you got Visa, you got all these different ways that, you know, uh, companies and, and developers can start to uh, utilize these new uh, these new releases into into their own ecosystem. So 
we'll, 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 we'll schedule another one later on. That sounds awesome. I mean, it was, this was really nice. I enjoyed it. And uh, I'm super psyched to, you know, I, I love Stellar Global. I love the Stellar community. I love being a part of it. I, I agree that there's so many intelligent people, so many good questions, and so many great ideas that are just, you know, it, it feels like a privilege to be a part of such a good, strong, and global community of, mm -hmm. of people, you know, and, and so I'm, I'm just happy to be here. And I'm happy to talk again whenever. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you again. Thanks for everybody for hanging out with us. Uh, this is going to be able to, it's going to be replaying nonstop on Twitter. You can rewatch it on YouTube. Um, everybody, you guys have a great time. Enjoy the rest of your day. We're out of here.